so our session is recorded okay good morning to all of you so today we will discuss part three of your lecture series on 117 or distribution and transmission and distribution which is performance of line okay last from the last few topics that we have we already discuss comprehensively resistance inductance and capacitance and the effect of magnetic induction to the line so today we will discuss the uh, performance now of the line considering you already know the transmission line parameters resistance inductance and capacitance respectively okay now uh, let us uh, move forward to the next slide here okay there we need to know no, the uh, the so-called uh, voltage and current relationships of every line. Now, this one, no, uh, this voltage and current relationship that is uh, uh, mentioned here, which is this voltage and current. Okay, you're considering. What is the relationship of both voltage and current in terms of phasor diagrams? Okay. In this state, in this case, okay, you need to draw the phasor diagrams in order to see the relationship of the voltages and currents based on their direction. If your polar here, you can still recall the polar representation. You have the voltage and current. And both of them has its corresponding angles, theta I and theta B, which is dependent that is plus or minus, plus or minus, which is dependent also if dagging or leading. Now, the so-called phasor diagram or the relationship to voltage and current angles, we will definitely see the power factor descending and considering theta V, U, subtract it by theta i which is very clear this one is the power factor angle at the sending end so for this when you say phasor diagram you're considering or concentrating on the direction parts or the so-called displacement okay so no matter what the magnitude in the phasor is is not important anymore it's much important that how the angles no uh, behave it depends on the voltage and current relationships that we will discuss no a little bit and also with the corresponding phasor diagram it's better to have the phasor diagram simply because in that way you can see uh, the behavior of the angles especially considering a transmission line angle what is the respective reference what is the relationship of I and R, I and L, and I and C, which is very, very, very important. Okay, now in this case, what is a short transmission line? We already described this one when you you are on your E115. We just described the R and L only without the capacitance. Although it's very clear that your R and L must be uniformly distributed along the line so that it will behave as a balance line. Kapag sinabi balance line, the voltages the currents are 120 degrees apart with the same magnitude okay the short transmission line you know uh, it covers uh 50 miles or an approximately 80 kilometer less and if you're considering now a line which is 100 kilometer okay to 200 kilometer approx so 240 on some places okay you're considering this one is a medium line Simply because if your length is increased, definitely the voltage must increase as well. So if you increase the voltage and the length, it will also have a capacitance already. It will definitely have a shunt capacitance if your voltage and your length of the line is increased. So we will discuss the, capacity, the effect of the capacitance when we go to the medium short line or me rather medium lines rather 
because there's another type of the line no which is 200 200 approximately 200 above is the so-called long line 240 but by the way sometimes it is 240 or 200 200 because on some other references they use 200 other references they use 240 but whatever it is if that's 200 above you're considering a medium or a long line but we will stick to what we have we have 240 kilometers no, for medium and 240 above for long as long as it is complete the uh, medium line has an rlc while in terms of long line you have zl and admittance and considering zl and admittance you're considering the acceptance already you're considering the conductance of you're considering resistance L and C respectively. So all of the lines, uh, param line parameters is already considered a long line. Okay, now this type of line is comparatively low. No, uh, it has a line voltage of 20 kilom uh, 20 kilovolts. And because of due uh, due to smaller length, we have only R and L. So it means your line, okay, that we will describe here is only R and L. And L must be computed by using XL 2 pi FL. You already know this. Okay. Simply because you need to get the uh, line inductance, okay, or uh, in inductive reactance so that you will have a ZL. ZL means the impedance of the line. Okay. Now, uh, it is called a short line representation already because you're considering only two parameters. We already described this one, so there's no uh, doubt, okay, that you already mastered or know this, the RLC parameters, because before you go to the transmission line performance, you need to know how to compute these parameters, which is your R, L, and C, respectively. Okay, I think I will now go forward, okay, to the... Uh, uh, next slide, okay, so that we can uh, uh, focus, okay, on the so-called uh, vector diagram or phasor diagram. Okay, now when we go to short lines, okay, please take note of one important parameter aspect that you already know, which is balanced polyphase. So, in your balanced polyphase, Okay, balance polyphase. You're considering a per phase analysis there. So when you say a per phase analysis, you need to get one phase of the system and then you can analyze the other phases. So just get one phase and then the others will follow. Now, one consideration of a, a per phase analysis is you need to have a Y connected system, which means if you have a Y connected system, your source must be Y connected, and your load must be Y connected as well. So when when you when you will say a load is balanced if they have the same impedance, so this is already common sense. So you need to have your impedances per arm in a Y connected, and it must have the same impedance. If you have the same load impedance, yeah, you're considering balanced system, and definitely you have the same transmission line parameters so the transmission line parameters that we are considering is simply this right so you are what no going back to what you have already done in the basic fundamental of your y to y balance so considering a y balance here definitely this already mentioned no, on your basic uh, polyphase system. Get, get, uh, get one phase of the system like this. Okay. Considering your neutral wire, okay, if there's a neutral wire here, definitely this is useless because if you're considering a balanced state, okay, a balanced state here, okay, your IN here in a phase form. IA plus IB 
plus IC is definitely equal sign no, to zero magnitude, but the bar angle, there's a bar angle, not zero. What is very important here is if your IN is approximately zero in magnitude, you're considering now a balanced system. Okay? You already know that no, on your basic polyphase system. So if you're considering now, okay, a phase basis, the uh, PPA here at phase A, which is the same thing with phase B and phase C, the only difference between those phases is they differ 120 degree apart in this phase wind. And one advantage of having a phase basis and a balanced state is if you got one phase of the system and you want to get the complex power, you just multiply all of them or one arm by three. And you solve the total power. So in this case, considering your pair phase basis, so I will draw the pair phase basis of this of this figure. Okay. So considering, okay, you have a voltage at the receiving end. Okay, please take note, I use a pair phase basis BRN considering up to point N, right? And you're considering a BSN here, okay? Which is voltage descending N to the neutral. So this what these two are phasors, okay? So what I will do here is I will have BRN as a phasor. And then you have here your transmission line parameter. We will only consider two parameters, your R and R, and I will deal with this as XL already. Considering your XL here is already multiplied by the angular velocity, which is omega, which is 2 pi f. Or simply 2 pi 60 equal to 377 for 60 hertz frequency. And 2 pi uh, 50 for equal sign to 314 radial per second, or approximately 314. Okay, for pi 50. Okay, considering that one now, you have your R and you have your XL respectively. And then you have your current that is flowing on the line, which is IA. And this one is your VSN okay, vector. When you say a vector, there is a magnitude and a bar angle. Okay? Please take note of that. One um, requirement as well, no? When you're considering, no? A vector diagram is you need to have a reference. No? You need to consider a reference. Okay, we will consider the reference. Okay, in this, okay, in this topic, we will make use of this our default as the re, the. Uh, uh, oops, sorry. As the receiving voltage. Okay, for default. Actually, you can use descending end voltage as well. If you want to have a different kind of phasor diagram, but they are exactly the same. It only the only uh, important thing here is before you go or draw a phasor diagram, it must have you must have a starting point phasor. Starting point phasor is reference. It is not always bar zero, but in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, of giving, okay. For example, there are some problems that you uh, a 230 kilovolt receiving end line. A 230 kilovolt receiving end line. There's a bar, no bar angle. So what you will do is the 230 kilovolt in a three phase system. You need to have it in a per phase basis. So what we will do to become BRN, you need to divide it by square root of three, and you must have a bar angle. That is just a starting point. Please take note, no, a reference is just your starting point. You cannot solve anything without a reference. Especially when considering the phasor diagram. So our reference here is VRN bar zero. And you have here, of course, your parameters of the line, which is definitely, initially, that is R and L. And please take note, take note, this is AC already. There's no DC. So it means that 
your R here is dependent on whatever your skin effect is, right? And dependent as well on temperature. We've done this many, many times. Okay. So in this case, the L there must be designed first. And especially before you go to your SLD. Okay, this is already your pair phase basis or the single line diagram. So thus, a single line diagram is simply the pair phase representation of your system, which is based on 115 as well. So this is our short line approximate, okay? That one. Okay, we will make use of that on the next slide. So we already uh, mentioned on this slide the importance of your balance polyphase principles or concepts okay we need to clear all the drawings and we can move forward okay to this slide okay now this slide is the product or the representation of the overall power system diagram on slide number three we already have okay this per phase basis and please take we need to draw the phase or diagram this one so that when you draw the phase or diagram on the succeeding phasors you will have a uh, uh, you already uh, have a of how you will do a phase or diagram considering a single line that a per phase basis or per phase representation of a certain line so if you can see on the next slide, I will go to this next slide first. Okay. You already have the voltage current vector diagram. The question is how we will draw that, sir. It's very simple. To those who already okay, uh, have an idea on AC circuits, especially when you're considering uh, how, uh, uh, angle representation, vector representation, you also do that on your basic polyphase system. It will become a much easier task to do this you no, know, on this slide okay but before i do that i need to okay to uh, give you some basic principle or concept first so that you will have an idea on how to to deal with that vector okay first of which is we need to go to the basics okay especially you no, know, okay on your easy circuits okay first on your inductance L okay now I usually use a mnemonic here so that I will not be confused no so, let's be reminded of the Guardia Civil formula okay that formula is a very, 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 very important formula. No, I okay. Uh, discuss on my students. Now, okay, the conventional flow. What is the conventional flow? You use a conventional flow like this. If you have a source on the left side, and then you have a load on your right side. The conventional flow is a clockwise direction, right? So like this, it's a conventional flow. So we will make use of that. Okay. Now the conventional flow is here. Under the letter of the civil formula. Thus, it's clear no? that the voltage, okay. I will erase one part here. Sorry for that. Okay. That the voltage will definitely leads the current okay by a certain angle okay now if in that if you have only okay an inductor alone in the circuit what is the relationship of the voltage and current it means that you have only an inductor in the circuit Shempre, you have here your voltage of the inductor you have the current in the inductor definitely what's the relationship of vl and il V leads I by a certain angle, 90 degree. So if you interchange letters, it will also interchange the behavior 
this is the condition. So it means that UI lags the voltage by a certain angle 90. This is the same. This is the same. They are the same. Okay? So please take note of that, please. Even on our hard times that you have difficulty of understanding 117 or this course. It's very clear that you okay, must remember this kind of things. Simply because when you go... Okay, and when you take your licensure board, you have those basics that you have. And then apply it on some of the problems and principles. Okay, you cannot have an, any hard time to answer a problem. Because you are you know, born to analyze problems, electrical engineers. Okay. Now, how about if that is capacitance alone? Okay, so capacitance alone. Okay, if you have your C here, you have your voltage C, and you have your current IC. Okay, so what's the relationship of the voltage and the current on a capacitor? We will do the same pattern here. I will change you no know, uh, annotations. As you can see here, this is your capacitor, and this is the relationship of the current and the voltage. Okay, based on that, you can have this analysis that the current definitely will lead voltage as yes, you can require the civil formula by a certain angle if that is alone in the circuit alone it means only that that uh, that parameter okay so you have leading condition of the voltage by 90 however this is the same thing with this depends on whatever your reference is. By the way, before anything else, if you have this kind of okay, of statements, please take note that whatever the right of your statement, that will always be your reference. Whatever the right on the statement. And the left of the statement, okay, considering guys, our point of view here, you have your left, you have your right, okay? The left of the statement is your rotating phasor. This will dictate on, based on rotation, if the angle leads or lags. Leads or lags. So you already know what is leading and lagging all about. Okay? This is just a review. Okay? If your angle no rotates in a clockwise direction with respect to whatever your reference is you're considering a lagging condition and you always use a minus value okay on the vector diagram otherwise okay if you rotate the angle in a counterclockwise direction and that will be a leading condition considering a positive angle which i could say theta so theta can be any value okay as long as you know what how the rotating phase or dictates the condition and what are those conditions okay last but not the least no is okay last but not the least is your resistance okay your resistance here we have already capacitance. We have already uh, uh, inductance. The only parameter that is, is resistance. It's pretty clear. In a resistance, the voltage and the current always in phase with each other, whatever happens. They have the same magnitude. Ah, not, not really. They have the same uh, different magnitude, but they have the same vector angle. So thus, the current will lead, ah, rather, in phase. The word must be in phase. Okay. The current will be in phase with the voltage, and the voltage is in phase with the current. Please take note of that last okay, condition. 
we're in, you're considering your system that you have only voltage and current at the resistor only. So it means this is your resistor. What is the relationship of voltage and current in the resistor alone? So they are in phase with each other. So please take note again of these relationships because we will make use of that on our vector diagram. Okay, being that said, how can we okay, draw the vector diagram of this single line diagram that you see okay, on this slide? Okay, what I will do is I will change uh, color format. Okay, I will make use of the black first. And we will make use of definitely this uh, conditions. Okay, since I have a good okay, um, pen here, I can definitely draw the phasor diagram with ease. Okay, hopefully, it will be more understandable. Okay, based from our discussion on the last slide, we make use of this VRN as our reference. So it means you have VRN bar zero. Here is another vector, and we make use of that you know, as a VSN bar alpha. Okay, wherein in vector diagram, the VSN represents your magnitude and the bar angle means the angle displacement. Okay, now what will happen here is we will make use of the lagging condition. Okay. Considering this okay, load as a inductive load. So it means an inductive load has a power factor which is lagging in condition. So hence, what is, what are, okay, this you can recall this one in AC circuits, okay. That in a lagging power factor, the current will always lose whatever the voltage at the receiving end by a certain angle theta, okay, which is I could say theta r, okay. Oh, okay, current I got. and definitely, guys, no, the current, okay, at the line, current at the sending end. The current at this receiving end are the same because they are connected in series, definitely. Okay, now if that will be you no know, the case here, we can have okay the uh, vector diagram. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay, we can have the vector diagram mm -hmm. here, okay, at this right side, okay, by having this annotation here, okay. So, let us start, you now first with this analysis. Okay, this is the corresponding vector diagram or pacer diagram. So, before you start, You need to have, okay, the reference. Okay, our reference, okay, I will uh, make use of the, of the, uh, of this space here. We have your VRN. Okay. Now, it is clear that it slugs. No? And by the way, we need to have, okay, the uh, condition, huh? If that is slugs, okay, you rotate the angle in a clockwise direction with respect to whatever the reference is. So, if this is the reference here, and IR is the rotating vector, so it must rotate lagging with respect to your reference, which is VRN. So it's pretty clear now, it is located here. Okay, which is simply equal to your IR as well. Okay, I could say I, which is equal to IS as well. So it's clear as well that you rotate the angle in a theta R lagging condition clockwise means if you go back here lagging condition okay 
definitely what you will do, what I always do, okay? I usually, okay, have a cross here. So it means that I already finished, okay, this letter. Except for the I here because you need the I, the I in the drops. Okay. By the way, using circuit analysis, by the way, you know, using AC circuits, it's pretty much clear that to get VSN bar alpha, okay, you to have the BRN first, diba, by KBL. You can have a KBL here, but this will be definitely the result. Bar zero. Plus whatever your IR vector is, okay. Now your IR vector, okay, will be dependent if lagging or leading, right? So I will make use of this equation here, plus or minus theta r, and then you multiply it by whatever your ZL here is. Okay. Now the minus here. Means lagging condition. The plus here means a leading condition. Okay, so this is your very obvious, the only equation that you will use in a short time. Simply because that is what now based on TBL, the minus and plus there depends on your reference, right? So minus there in terms of k okay, minus. Please take note, it becomes minus simply because your VRN is bar zero, right? And what is theta R? Theta VR minus theta I. And there's no theta VR because zero. So here, if you have a negative value, theta VR minus theta IR, you have a negative value definitely. And that will be a lagging condition for current. Okay. So in this case, let's move forward. Now, definitely, we need to get the voltages. When you say ve vector diagram voltage and current relationships, okay, we need to get the voltage at here, no, at the resistor, and we need to get the voltage X at this inductor. So, how we will do that? No, so no, definitely. What you will do is to project this current here. Okay. And then, as you can see here, we must have a vector at the voltage. Please take note. The vector of the voltages and current must be, must be okay, connected with each other. You cannot connect your voltage KVR okay, by current because voltage and current are different entities. So me, it means that your VR here must connect a voltage as well. So what is that voltage? We will go first at the resistor part. And what is the constant parameter that is flowing on the circuit? That is the current. And what is the, okay, the relationship of voltage and current in a resistor? Go back here. Okay. I will definitely have... A different call of the annotation here. I will go here. We will make use of the current as reference in this manner simply because the current that is flowing on the resistor, the current flowing at the voltage at the inductor is the same. We're considering okay, the vectors for both of this relationship because they are connected in series. Hence, it's clear, guys. No, I will uh, draw now here. This vector, we don't need the k, the magnitude because if that is one million, I will already exceed. Okay, so it's very clear here that we must have k okay, only the angle. Okay, this is VR definitely, and this is your current IR. They are in phase, by the way. Okay, for example, your VR. This is the magnitude. No care. As long as you have this vector. Okay. And definitely this is the same with theta r here. If you expand this one, this is also theta r. Okay. Now, if this is the current okay, vector here, what is the relationship of the current 
versus the voltage at the inductor side. Okay? Going again, no, to this. We will make use of the current simply because the current at the inductor side is the same with the current at the resistor side because they are connected in series. So hence, if that is leading by 90 degree, looking at this, okay, this is your current, definitely this will be 90. Okay, this is your cur uh, 90 degree and look the rotation of the angle with respect to the current preference. This plus 90 because counterclockwise is leading. So you have here definitely your Vx. This is your Vr, by the way. Okay, I will uh, erase this part again so that it will be clear. So this is Vr. Okay. Now, you already establish, okay, or already have the vectors of VR and VX. So, I can eliminate them already, okay? But if you add vectorially, vectorially, ha, huh, this, what is the result? Siyempre, the result is the voltage at the impedance side, okay? So, you need to add them vectorially. So that it will have this vector here, and I can say that is Vz. Okay. And last but not the least, if you already have Vz and Vrn, what will be the concluding remarks? Definitely that will be your Vr. Okay. So I will draw the Vr here with a green, no? Okay. Vector. Starting at this point up to that point. Oops, okay. Hopefully that is already done. Uh huh. Uh, not uh, quite good. Okay, take two. Mm -hmm. Okay, from this point, I need to draw here to this. Okay, thanks. Okay, now, this is your starting point, and definitely, you hope you can, you can see this little bit of arrow sign and the alpha. Now, based on the reference, and it is a clockwise direction that is positive, alpha, and this is your V S N vector. And hence, as you can see, definitely, in other words, in vector notation, Vsn is equal to Vrn plus okay, your Vz. And that constitutes to the total voltage at the sending end. And then you can see here, that is the overall vector diagram of that short line approximate. So you can see now, no, and hopefully, no, you can review this video for the purpose of how we will do the succeeding vector diagrams of medium and long line approximate. Okay. And hope this will be clear on the next on the succeeding okay, videos.